What up, y'all? It's the Robot Watcher back with another video. Like, comment, subscribe, do all the YouTube stuff. Kool Aid McKinstry. Let's see if we're going to take a tip. Pause. Let's get into it. All right, the best name in the whole draft. Best name at the combine, wherever you're going to be, he got the best name. So, 6'1, 190 or 195. I seen 180, 195. I just kind of did the middle, median. So, 190. We'll see what he is at the combine in like two days. Um, 21 years old. He's a true junior. 2021. Got on the field early. 15 games played, 16 total, I mean, I said 16, 26 total tackles, 9 solo, 17 assists, 1 interception, 1 pass deflection. Cool, cool, good, true freshman stats. Um, next year, 20, 2022, 15 games played, 35 total tackles, 29 solo, 16 assists, 1 interception, 15 pass deflections. He was really showing that he could get his hands on the ball that sophomore year. People tested him a lot. He showed them why they shouldn't test them. Maybe not a lot of interception numbers, but a lot of pass deflections and a lot of good defense on that take. But whatever. 24, 2013, 20, not any 13, not any team. 2023, this past year, 14 games played, 32 total tackles, 24 solos, 18 assists, no interceptions, but he still has seven pass deflections. We'll talk about why those stats in the in the passing game kind of dropped, but. Let's get into the stuff y'all came for. Let's get into the film. She wanna chill with Sosa, but not every day. My bad. I was a little turnt before the video came out. But anyways, 2023 strengths. We're gonna start not 2023 strengths, strengths in general. But in 2023, they did not test that boy. Everything it seemed like when I was watching the tape. Of course, he got tested here and there. But compared to 2022, it seems like everything um, was to the opposite side of the field, which is crazy because they have a good corner on the opposite side, which we'll cover next week. But it seemed like concepts went to the other side. The QB's primary read was to the other side. Most of the time, the offense was trying to go to the opposite side of the field. Not to say that he's a this side of the field, a shut down guy, but I did notice that a lot. And, and that's good for a corner. That's what you want to see. So that's kind of why his numbers were a little bit lower when it comes to pass reflections and interceptions. When I talked about those stats, but let's get into the actual film. Um, patient feet and eyes at the line of scrimmage. He loves to press. He loves to get up in the guy's face and, and put his hands on him or mirror him, whatever he got to do. But he's just shown that he's not easily beat off the line, at least when it's not in the red zone. He's not easily beat off the line. He's not going to fall for a lot of face. He's not going to fall for a lot of dancing, a lot of uh, movement, a lot of, um, what do you call it, eye candy. He's shown that he's stable patient with his feet eyes they are lined at the line of scrimmage and he's going to cover you at the line of scrimmage or at your release really good which is you want to see in a press man corner um also great foot speed to mirror wide receivers he has the ability to to stick the guys kind of like glue and i was going to put for his um player build elmer's glue but i was like okay maybe people want to actually see something that has to do with football instead of just being funny but literally he's like glue like he's going to be able to mirror receiver and just be in their hip pocket the entire time at any level of the field um now i will say i don't have this in his weaknesses he did struggle with those very very twitchy um super fast route runners like Aeneas smith underneath but most of the time he's in a guy's hip pocket like glue Really, really good foot speed, really, really good mirroring ability, discipline, hip flexibility, all that to be able to mirror wide receiver and be able to snap down when they snap down, be able to slow down when they slow down, speed up, keep the pace of that uh, route, basically running the route with them or for them. Really, really good uh, corner when it comes to that. Also, really good IQ and route recognition in his own. Um, he's not just a man corner. Um, he can. He's shown the ability to where he can see when an offense is trying to manipulate the zone that they're in and get a guy open in a hole or remove him from his zone so a guy can come in from underneath that. That shows that he has really good IQ. He's really good at playing off. He doesn't necessarily have to be impressed. He can play in off. He can play with his back to the receiver if he needs to, playing in his blind spot or watching the quarterback. He's shown ability to be a good zone corner. Now, I don't think he's an elite zone corner. I don't necessarily – he showed – I don't think he showed that he wasn't elite either, but I don't think he's elite. I think he may be an elite man corner, or if not elite, borderline elite, in a really good or good zone corner, which is a really good corner at the end of the day. Um, I think people, matter of fact, we'll get into that, that at the end, but really good in zone, really good at recognizing routes, really good at IQ, which you want to see from a corner. Now, he does have to develop that and get better um, at seeing multiple routes and different looks in the NFL, but he's really good for the college space. Also, Really good ability to close space. I talked about him being able to play off. 
He's able to close that gap between him and the wide receiver really, really fast. He can come downhill really, really fast if he needs to break on the ball. If a guy has a couple steps on him and he sees, all right, the quarterback is kind of gearing up to throw on the ball, he's able to hit a third gear, fourth gear to get in and close that space on the wide receiver and get a pass breakup. He had one against Brian Thomas Jr. He had a couple other on his tape against Texas A&M, things like that. Really, really good when it comes to closing that space. That's why I also think he can be a really good zone corner. Um, and maybe even elite. Maybe he has elite upside, but he didn't show it so far. But really good at closing that space. And in man, I mean, if you get him beat a little bit, um, you talk about what's the guy, Tariq Woolen in Seattle. Talk about how fast he is. He's not necessarily the most technically great corner, but because especially his rookie season, because he was so fast when guys beat him, he had the recovery speed to get back there. He's shown some of that, not to well in recovery speed, but he's shown good reco recovery speed to close some gaps. Um, also, plays well physically and on the safer side. If you want, I've noticed a lot with him with smaller, faster receivers, kind of slender frames, guys like, um, what's the dude from Texas? Xavier Worthy. Um, Aeneas Smith, uh, guys like that, he will get up in their face, press, because he loves to press, but he'll put his hands on them. He'll beat them up. Like, he will really put his hands on guys and beat them up and really still stay in that hip hop and mirror those guys while he's being physical because he knows, hey, your weakness is against a physical corner. Well, let me get physical with you. But I've also seen where he was facing the guys like A.D. Mitchell. He's facing these bigger guys, Evan Stewart, guys like that. Or Malik Neighbors, sometimes. He kind of got a little physical with him sometimes. Most of the time, Malik Neighbors, he could play safer where, hey, I'm going to get up and press you, but I'm not going to try to jam you off the line. I'm not going to try to get up in your chest, push you around because you're a bigger guy. You're a stockier guy. You can handle that. I'm going to get up, uh, get up in your face, press you. I'm just going to simply mirror your entire route so I don't have to play hands on. That's why I also said that he has really good foot speed when it comes to mirroring wide receivers. That shows how good your foot speed is when you're not touching a wide receiver and they're able to go full speed and you're still able to keep step for step with them and mirror them. I think he's really good playing in either or depending on what the receiver is. If you want to play physical, he can't. He knows you're, uh, you're uh, lacking physicality. You're struggling against physical corners. He can do that while still playing good coverage. If he knows that you're a really physical uh, or a fast wide receiver that if you beat him off the release, you're going to be gone. He can play safety. He can play hands off and mirror that guy. So really good in that. Um, last couple points. He has speed to keep up with most wide receivers downfield. There is times where he gets beat, um, but he does seem to show enough speed to, you know, keep up with guys downfield. If he does get beat, it's more about technique and getting sacked, things like that. But he's still good enough and fast enough to get downfield. I don't think he's a 4-3 speed guy. We'll see at the combine. But I don't think he's necessarily 4-5 either. I think he'll be mid 4-4, four, four, high 4-4, four, four, maybe even low 4-4s. Four, four. But if he is 4-5, it's really low 4-5s. Four, Anyways, good undercutting routes. He's shown the ability to get up uh, undercut routes when you have good angles, things like that. Talked about that recovery speed. So he is able to do that. So that can help you in zone. That can help you in man. And that can help you get your hands on the ball and make plays. I know he didn't have a lot of interceptions, but that will help with that. And also, like I said, just glue. Uh, at the end, I put glue because he just sticks to guys, man. He just, whenever he's around, a wide receiver or if guarding a wide receiver he's just able to stay with them most of the time like he's like a blanket like he's just stuck to them but i really think people are kind of overthinking kool-aid um came in as cornerback one and coming into the year and he kind of fell down fell down fell down i don't know i don't know if he's my cornerback one but it i don't know why his stock has fallen maybe it's because guys have played better but he's he's just a really good corner and i think he's kind of getting slept on late in the first round He's going to be a really good corner. I'll say that. He will be a really good corner, cover corner for somebody. So don't sleep on him. Don't forget about him. If you take him in the first round, don't be bummed because you didn't go, I want a Kamari Lasseter. I want a Terry Narno. I want a Nate Wiggins. You got a guy. He's going to be a guy. But let's get into the stuff that's not his game. All right, let's get into the stuff that's not necessarily his game. When I was first watching the tape, I didn't think I had a lot of stuff to say because I thought that as coverage-wise, there are stuff that he can, of course, improve on. He can of course improve on his little technique you know getting stacked by guys getting beat over the top um but you're not going to be perfect so i was like it's not enough to know he can um you know get better at recognizing route ids things like that but it's not stuff to note because you can't be perfect as a prospect but then as i kept watching games i noticed that his tackling technique was not the best he sometimes can be an ankle biter. Sometimes he want to come downhill and put a little hit on guys, but he doesn't wrap up when he does that. So I think he can improve his tackling technique. And overall, and going into the next point, I think he can just prove his effort, his effort, his effort consistently in run support. Um, there are times where he does give effort. There are times where he's coming downhill and it looks like, oh, he want to hit somebody. 
he wants to help and run support. But then there are other times where he's kind of getting blocked by Xavier Worthy and he doesn't really shed the block. He's not even interested. They're both just standing there. He's getting blocked downfield and he's kind of just standing there out of bounds. Then the last second he's like, oh, let me try to get him. Or a guy's running at him and he just doesn't look interested in tackling him. And now you factor that in with his bad tackling technique, it's almost like, oh, he's going to be a negative in the run game if he doesn't clean up that effort. And that's usually not a thing you see from Bama guys, but I, it was definitely enough to know. It was def There are times where he makes tackles. There are times where he wraps up, maybe, maybe a little low at the ankle, but he wraps up and gets a guy down. Or even he wraps up when a guy catches the ball and brings him down. But when it comes to somebody running at you and run support, trying to get off a block, things like that, he got to improve his effort, one. Two, he has to improve his technique or he's just going to get ran by. And he has to want to, you know, sometimes it doesn't look like he want, wants to tackle or help and run support. He got to be able to do that because there are screens, there's tosses, there's receivers just running down field. Like somebody gets it in a different round, kind of is on his side of the field now whenever they're getting some yak. He just doesn't look like he's interested in, hey, that ain't what I'm here for. They not, I'm not going to get paid to do this, which – it's kind of crazy. For some teams, it's going to knock him off. I know uh, I had a Lions fan that wanted <laughs> me to do him, uh, do Kool-Aid. Shout out to Derek. But I don't know if Dan Campbell's going to like that. Like, if it's going to pop up, he's probably going to ask him about it in interviews. And maybe they'll clear it up and be like, all right, cool. But I don't know if Dan Campbell wants a guy who's this disinterested in, you know, helping him run support and having this bad tackling technique. But also, last thing, he could buy the ones, um, fakes in some red zone, in the red zone. Um, it was a lot of times where he wasn't as disciplined or as patient as he is towards the line of scrimmage whenever you're deeper down in the field is when you're in the goal line, red zone, 10 yards down scenarios. I think from 20 yards down, he's pretty good. But once you get in that five to, five to zero yards, 10 to zero yards, he kind of got a little beat on some slants from like A.D. Mitchell, some kind of zig routes or kind of, you know, pivot routes from uh, Xavier Worthy. It showed up a little bit on his tape. And Nia Smith beat him a couple times in the red zone. But... Yeah, that's all I really have. I mean, it's not necessarily a lot of bad other than those two things at the top. And then, of course, you can improve on the third thing. So, really, really good guy. I think some people are just overthinking him. But let's get into his player build. Let's not be here all day. All right, let's get into everybody's favorite part of the video, or at least mine, when it comes to making these videos. This is my favorite part. Um, what we have built today is a press man corner. Simple as that. He can do other things. He can play good in zone. He's he's good in um, off man. He's good in... Good in zone, like I say, yes, good IQ. But whenever I see him playing at his best way, it looks like he wants to do the most is get up in the guy's face, impress him, and just play man coverage and stick to that guy. He's just a press man corner. Really good IQ, really good uh, uh, route IQ and discipline, I guess you could say. Really good discipline with his eyes and feet. A quintessential man corner, basically. But let's get into the shades of um, one of these guys helped me do the other guy. Um, but let's talk about pause. That sounds crazy. But one of these guys helped me come up with the comp for one of these other guys. So first one, Stephon Gilmore. I think Stephon Gilmore is really, really good. He's not this crazy, athletic, juiced up corner. But he's really, really good when it comes to his IQ and zone. Really, really good when it comes to his route IQ. And man also, he's able just to stick to guys. He's sticking in their hip pocket. Stay in their hip pocket. You know, mirror a guy and just make a play on the ball at the... Uh, Whenever the ball is finally thrown to him, he's really got to. I've seen him lock up Kyle Pitts. I've seen him lock up receivers. I've seen him get game winning interceptions in the Super Bowl. I've seen him force fumbles in the Super Bowl. He's just, when he was at his best, I think he's one of the all time great corners. Sorry, somebody going to talk about bias in the comments, but he's one of the best corners of all time, if you ask me, especially at his peak when he won Defensive Player of the Year. One of the best corners ever. Maybe top five, top 10. Peak. Simple. But. I think he shows a little bit of Stephon Gilmore or a lot of bit of Stephon Gilmore in his game. And the reason I say that is because the first person I thought of to compare him to is Derek Stingley. Derek Stingley, another guy who is really good in press, really good at making plays on the ball with his hands, really good staying in guys' hip pockets, being glued. He can be physical if he needs to. He can mirror guys. Also, still pretty good in zone. Not necessarily elite, but still good in zone. Pretty good route IQ. That just reminds me so much of uh, Kool-Aid McKinstry. I think he has a lot of these two guys in him. When I was looking at Derek Stingley, kind of looking at his um, draft evals coming in, just to make sure that I wasn't tripping, they had a comp for Stephon Gilmore. And the more I thought about it, I was like, damn, he do remind me of Steph. So that's those two comps, why I have those. James Bradbury is my third one, another guy who is really good. Um, he's, he's not a necessarily physical guy, but he's still able to mirror guys in his prime. And he was still you know, able to get beat over top at times. That's why I kind of had him. If you see him now, he's able to get beat over top a lot. 
more often because he's a little bit older, not as fast. But he still was able to get beat over top at times, but still a really good man corner. Could have been almost elite if he was almost elite if when he was with the Panthers. Um, if he was able to get his head around and play the ball more. Really good at mirroring guys, really good playing hands-on if he needs to, but had it, had needed to up his ball skills. But those are the three guys, the shades of, that I have for your boy Kool-Aid. Don't overthink it. He's a really, really good player, really, really good coverage player. If you need somebody to cover somebody, he's going to cover somebody. I don't know if he's going to be able to shadow guys at the next level because he didn't do it at Alabama, but he's really, really good at covering guys. He's seen a plethora of guys. Malik Neighbors, Brian Thomas Jr., um, what's the other guy? Keishon Butte. What's the other guy at LSU right now that went back? Number two. Can't think of his name. Um, Xavier Worthy. A.D. Mitchell. Um, uh, practice against Isaiah Bonds in practice. Um, Aeneas Smith. Um, I just said his name. He transferred to Oregon. You know who I'm talking about. Evan, Evan Stewart. I think that's his name. Something like that. But just really, really good season. Played a lot of guys. Played good against those guys. Good cover corner, bro. Don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. He's definitely a top four or five corner in this class. Maybe top three. He might be the best. I got to finish everybody else and line them up. But he might be the best when it comes to just pure coverage, man coverage at least. Definitely probably the best man cover corner. Simple. Simple as that. But that's all I got for y'all. That's the video. If you like, comment, subscribe. Do all the YouTube stuff. Um, see you every Friday. Let's watch the combine. Let's have a good time. See what these guys run. Remember, GPS is a little bit more important than, uh, than 40s. Not GPS, whatever it is. The miles per hour is a little bit more important than 40s. But let's just have fun this weekend. Please comment who you want to see next. Like, subscribe, share the video. Help me out, you feel me? We, the views been good, but they've been, you know, tweaking down a little bit back to what they were before. Let's get them back up. Let's get them back up. So, I'll see y'all next week.